Welcome back to the Now Morning Show. This morning we're getting to, ready to dive into the University of the West Indies Artificial Intelligence Innovation Center. To do so, I welcome the Executive Director of the Center, Dr. Craig Ramlal. Good morning to you. Good morning to you. I like your spectacles. Why, thank you. They're very similar to yours, <laughs> yes. aren't they? <laughs> Great minds and whatnot. So tell me, for those of us who've never heard about this Artificial Intelligence Innovation Center, what is the core mission and why is it so important to the Caribbean right now? So the Artificial Intelligence Innovation Center, quite a mouthful, is the UE St. Augustine's campus center. It sits under the principal. Mm -hmm. it, the posi it's positioned to serve the entire campus. So it has the reach of all of the faculties, all of the departments, and so on. And it also serves as a, a, a mechanism to fulfill the digital transformation agenda mm. of the University of the West Indies. The St. Augustine campus has seen artificial intelligence as a very, very strategic and top priority moving forward. We see where the world is heading mm -hmm. and we look at the center, this official center, to develop artificial intelligence based research, commercial products and uh, capacity building. So look at programs and, and so on. I'm really curious as to how. Tell, break it down for those of us who, I mean, uh, people who've been studying AI, who are yeah. very much in the field, yeah. they understand how it works and Correct. they say, all right, this is how we can use AI to the benefit. But for the average person, the most we still hear about AI is we have chat GPT, you have whatever in your phone, you have these kind of simple things a lot of people are still using, the common person, right? You might have people who make making music or making art or whatever the case might be. Tell me how we integrate AI into these innovations. So we are very new. And for, but we are still the largest AI center in the Caribbean. We, yeah. have, we have about 50-something members so far. And the idea is that most of the innovations that you have around the world are not really built for our Trinidad and Tobago, Caribbean. or Caribbean context, <laughs> at all, at all. Yeah. And so the idea is that we will build the foundational systems. If you go on ChatGPT right now and you type in uh, something uh, around the Caribbean uh, diaspora, you might not get correct information. Right. And so we are building foundational language models that will replace those that Caribbean people can use, and we will give it away for free okay. to the Caribbean people. So what we want to do is build an AI ecosystem. What this means is that we will build software, we will build hardware, and for some things, we will try to build that ecosystem where we have industry persons, we have private organizations use our particular research and develop products and companies uh, alongside with us um, for the Caribbean people as well as to get into external markets. So I think that that is very important mm -hmm. where we try to take what we already have, especially in culture, I love that you raised that point, mm -hmm. and we build it internally and we see about the marketing of it for the various other markets in the world. Tell me about some of the most exciting research clusters that you're working on now, because I mean, you can use AI for everything from agriculture, like we mentioned, to culture, uh, to digital humanities and cybersecurity, of course. Uh, tell me, what are some of the research clusters that you're working on or the, the innovations that we can look forward to? Definitely. Uh, I think that there's a common misconception that artificial intelligence is software only. Mm -hmm. And what the center has done is we have very, very uh, willingly moved to integrating both hardware, software, and push the mathematics research as far as possible. Okay. So we have a cluster, one of them is called Lightning, and what they do is they make artificial lightning. And so what they do with yeah. <laughs> so this, yeah. this sounds like the beginning of that bad movie that I saw. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> so they make artificial lightning. Correct. What is the purpose of that? Yes. So they take water, mm -hmm. so water you get from your taps, wasa water, and they take a solar panel and using artificial intelligent control algorithms and some very, uh, very, some very good math and some very good <laughs> electrodes, they create, artificial, they create artificial lightning to dissolve nitrogen into water to make fertilizer. Okay. And then they, uh, they, they, they put that onto crops and then they control how much fertilizer you put into crops. So imagine a place where you have no access to water, you only have rainwater. Mm -hmm. You have no access to electricity, you only have solar panels to use. You can still put Only have cr solar panels yeah. to use. If you have current, you have no solar panels. If you have no current, you have no. Yeah, but if you have solar panels, if, yeah, you have no current, you have no solar panels. Uh, you have to buy solar panels. Okay. Yeah, so this is for very remote areas. Okay. Yeah. yeah so you can get solar panels, you have rainwater, and yeah. you can now make uh, fertilizer. Fertilizer. 
and distribute it accordingly to, to your, your crops, crops. Okay. Uh, which is also done automatically. Okay. Uh, that's one cluster. We have another cluster that looks at integrating renewable energy systems uh, into uh, uh, any country. And how do you do that properly? How, what are the studies that you need to do? What are the control systems you need to implement for those types of things? We have another one in digital humanities. I could go on. We have no, nine. Please, come on, we, share. Yeah, we have another one with digital humanities, which is also quite important. And what they look at is transmedial storytelling. They look at taking the Caribbean arts uh, mm -hmm. or Caribbean stories and how do you use artificial intelligence systems to do that, but do it in such a way that the human is still very much involved in the creation of those stories and some way involved in telling of those stories as well. But AI is augmenting the human part of telling those stories. We have another one where we build semiconductors, we build chips. Mm -hmm. So we have a, a big crisis in the world right now. I served on the United Nations General uh, High Level uh, Advisory Body and chips was a big issue for us. Uh, you have this issue of uh, ch uh, chip sovereignty where countries are holding chips uh, to themselves. We, that will be an issue for us. You want to do AI systems, you, you don't have access to chips, you don't have access to compute. Okay. So we are looking at developing uh, uh, compute platforms, the chips itself, designing, fabricating those chips and bringing them uh, in locally for this implementation of our AI systems that we have. So we design them and make them abroad and bring them in locally Correct. or we design them and, and produce them here? Currently we design them here, make them abroad and bring them back here. Are we looking at developing that production aspect of things here as in well? In the future. So? All right, nice. Now in terms of the human aspect of things and the hum and building capacity, I mean you is still a school at the end yeah, of the day, right? right. Uh, are there certifications or courses or anything like that that people can get into to be a part of this? That's correct. So we have postgraduate programs that we are releasing with the Department of Electrical and Computer Engineering. On TTT, with DK Rustant, <laughs> I, I told the public this uh, in 2023 uh, that we were building out these programs and these programs are now becoming ready yeah. for semester intake in September 2026. Nice. These programs are the Masters of Applied Science in Artificial Intelligence, the Postgraduate Certificate in Artificial Intelligence, the um, MPhil in Artificial Intelligence and the PhD in Artificial Intelligence. But alongside of that, alongside of the postgraduate programs, we are looking at short courses that will okay. also take persons from industry, from government, uh, from NGOs, CSOs and so on, and we will build courses specific to them to bring in. I had some comments uh, earlier on if we are looking at other types of programs, mm -hmm. and that's true, we are. We are looking at interdisciplinary master's programs, and we are also looking at undergraduate programs as okay. well. So, but these things are in the book. What we need to do is we need to build, really, really build a capacity, a technical capacity of persons who understand how to build this technology out. And okay. The focus on postgraduate, the reason for that is that the technology moves so quickly, you need persons who understand the cutting edge fairly quickly as well. Mm -hmm. So you have to build that capacity first. And we are a regional university, so we have to do so for most Could of the country. Caribbean, yeah, exactly, yeah. for the Caribbean. This is yeah. fantastic. Now, you mentioned how fast the technology is moving, right? Uh, we also see the struggle when it comes to the ethical challenges yeah. surrounding AI. Tell me, uh, how is the centre helping to shape the regional policy about global AI governance? And what does it mean for the Caribbean's digital future? Yes, yeah, thank you for that. <laughs> So I would have said that I would have served on the United Nations Secretary General's High Level Advisory Board on AI, and I'm also the chair of the Caribbean AI Task Force. So let me break down those two things. Mm -hmm. the, what the UN did in 2023 is they looked at the five United Nations regions, so the, or the 193 countries, and they asked for 39 experts. They received 2,500 nominations and they chose 39 on top of that. Wow. So you had persons like the Secretary of State for Spain, the Minister of uh, AI for UAE, the Vice President of uh, Google Alphabet, <laughs> the Chief Technology Officer of OpenAI, who is ChatGPT, mm -hmm. the responsible AI, Chief Responsible AI Officer of Microsoft, the uh, Chief uh, technology officer of Sony Group and so on. Yeah. Many, many persons. Right? Only important people All, in AI okay, world. Well, right. <laughs> right. well, a few of them. Yeah. <laughs> and what we did, at, uh, so I, I served on that body, and what we did was we made sure that the Caribbean voices were heard in the recommendations that went into the Governing AI for Humanity report. That is a report we created. Right. From that report, we created uh, a set of seven recommendations that went into 
the Global Digital Compact, which was annexed to the uh, Pact of the Future, that was adopted by the 193 member states in 2024. And in 2025, three of those recommendations are in implementation right now. Okay. So now the Caribbean AI Task Force, which I also serve on, I'm the chair of, uh, during the 31st General Conference of Ministers, CTU Ministers, the ICT Ministers, they adopted the resolution for the task force. Okay. What we are doing is we are feeding what is happening internationally, globally, into the preparation of the recommendations for harmonized AI policies for the Caribbean nations, CARICOM nations. Mm -hmm. And we are building those out uh, with, again, Caribbean voices, and we are looking for feedback. Tell me who, who implements those things and enforces them to be able to say that uh, I'm going to hold people using AI and TNT, uh, the AI center, for example. Who, who is holding these people accountable? Is that a task force responsibility? It would be through declaration in June 2026 on how we hold and enforce those things to come through. So okay. right now we write the recommendations. Right. We have an interim report coming out, uh, hopefully this week. Our launch, the AI Center's launch, which I'm sure we'll get into, mm -hmm. is the, going to be the launch of the recommendations for the task force as well. It's okay. going to be a massive event. Well, tell me about <laughs> the event because we're almost out of time. So <laughs> when is the event happening? Saturday. This Saturday. The, this Saturday at Radisson Hotel. It starts at 10 a.m. It's a closed event. It's invite only. You mm -hmm. have to contact us to get a seat. We are honestly at capacity. I'm looking to see if we get more seats. But uh, it's something that you want to see where we would have persons from governments coming to talk. The AI task force is going to pre create their report. We have uh, industry and private organizations discussing AI policies and so on. And of course, the launch of our center itself. Yeah. If persons want to get in touch with, with the center to be able to explore partnership options or to get involved, how can they do so? Please visit our website at AIICENTRE.com. That's AIICENTRE.com. We have uh, partnerships for persons who are from industry, who just want to join as industry partners, or from different universities who want to join as academic partners, and so on. And that center is R-E, not E-R, right? That's correct, British right. spelling. A-I-I-C-E-N-T-E-R-E dot com? Dot com. All right, you can head across to the website and get all the information. Uh, Dr. Ramlal, thank you so much for joining us this morning and for sharing this information. Congratulations to you and to the entire team working on this uh, center. We definitely look forward to, A, the launch on Saturday, and of course, all the work that you'll be doing and the innovation that will come as a result of it. Thank you so yeah, much. No problem at all. We'll take a quick break, ladies and gentlemen, and we come back with your birthday shouts on now. Stick around.